All right, problem six of the chapter five hydraulics homework. We're going to figure out how many 72 inch reinforced concrete pipes would be needed to meet the design criteria above. So here's our information. We're going to use groove end with head wall inlet condition. And then we'll use the number of uh, reinforced concrete pipes found and check if the culvert is an inlet or outlet control. So first thing we need to do is figure out how many pipes we're going to need. Um, we know that we've got reinforced concrete pipe and we've got that grooved end with head wall control. So we are going to go ahead and use chart 2 and this is going to be type 2 with that type of entrance. And so what we're going to do is just go through all these possible scenarios and we have to make sure that we check and make sure we're not exceeding our maximum allowable headwater condition. In this case it's 309.3 .3 for a maximum elevation. So let's find out what that max headwater is. Remember from our formula sheet that our headwater is measured above that invert elevation. We talked about it in a prior problem here. So if we have our headwater here, um, that is really the definition of that is the water depth that is above that invert elevation. So we're told a max allowable headwater elevation. So to figure out that max headwater, we have to subtract the invert elevation from it. So it's going to be that 309.3 feet minus 301.0 feet. So our max headwater is going to be 8.3 feet. And you'll see that's going to be important here um, as we're checking these pipes. So we're going to grab our chart two here and start looking at our different scenarios. The first one we'll do, we're always going to have this 72 inch diameter because we're just going to add more and more pipes. So let's just see if one pipe will work. So that would give us a flow rate of 1000 cubic feet per second. So let's figure out what the HW over D would be for that scenario. So I'll come here to my chart two. I have 72 inches for my pipe. I'm going to draw a line that goes through my 1000 cubic feet per second. And whoa, check that out. I am off the chart on this side. Uh, if, even for my type two, um, it just is going to go off that whole thing. So that is too large. Uh, we cannot use that. HW over D is off the chart. So we are going to need at least two pipes here to start with. So let's go ahead and try two. So we'll have, if we have two pipes, we'll have still have that diameter of 72 inches, but now we'll have a flow rate cut in half because we have two of the pipes. And let's see what happens to our HW over D. So now we have 72 inches and we'll go through the 500 CFS and that does take us up to this point on uh, entrance type 1 but remember we're at entrance type 2 here with the grooved end and head wall so that gets us to about this value of 2.3 for our HW over D so let's see what that winds up to be for a headwater so HW over D is 2.3 and then we'll figure out the HW by taking that 2.3 and multiplying it by the D in this case 72 inches which is the same as six feet and that comes out to be 13.8 feet which is a lot bigger than our 8.3 feet so that is too large of a headwater. So let's continue on and get some more pipes here. So we'll still have our diameter of 72 inches but now we'll try three pipes and so we'll take that a thousand cut it by three 333.3 CFS for our three pipes and let's figure out what the HW over D will come out to be for that scenario. So now I'm going again still through my 72 but now going a little lower here to the 330 ish and coming over to line one and then drawing that straight across to entrance type two and I call that right about at that 1.4 line for HW over D. And now I take that 1.4, multiply it by the 6 feet to figure out my HW. And I do get 8.4 feet. Oh, that's so painful, right? I'm so close to that 8.3 feet. 
but I am a little bit bigger than it. Um, in the solution in the back of the book, it does say three pipes. But uh, I find that not that satisfactory because I feel like this is larger than, um, than it, what it's called for. Um, it is pretty close, so I can understand why they would do that. But I'm going to go on to four pipes just to see what happens here. So for my D equals 72 inches, now I've got four pipes instead. So my Q is going to be 250 cubic feet per second. So I'm on to the four pipe solution. And let's see what the HW over D is going to be for that one. So now I'm at 72. I'm going down through this 250, intersect with line 1, go straight over to line 2. So now I'm at the 1.1. That's going to work out a little bit nicer for me here. Give me a little bit more room to spare on that headwater. Like we said, if that headwater exceeds the limit, you're going to be overflowing your road which is what we really don't want to do. Now, of course, putting in another 72 inch pipe seems a little extreme. So I'm sure there are other possibilities uh, aside from that. But given that that's the problem that's been stated, we're going to solve it as stated. So I would advocate, given this problem scenario, to go for the four pipes. Um, but you know, in the back of the book, it does say three pipes. I can understand getting to four is really does change things a lot but I've got both of those solved for you here. And so that is all of your inlet control. Uh, using inlet control to solve for your number of pipes. So that was the first part of the question was, you know, how many pipes will we use? And then the second part is to use that number of pipes and check if the culvert is inlet or outlet controlled. Okay, well, if it's inlet controlled, uh, if it's four pipes, we know that it would be this 6.6 .6 feet. If it's three pipes, we know it would be the 8.4. So let's check both of those with inlet control. I'm sorry, outlet control. We already did inlet control. Outlet control. So for the three pipes, uh, we can grab that on our chart nine. So this would be chart nine for this example. And so for those three pipes, we would have, uh, like we just had above, D equals 72 inches. We would have a L of 100 feet that's been given to us. Uh, we have that KE of 0 0.2. And we can connect those two first, and then we'll make our turning line. So our 72 and our 100. So we've got our turning line there. And then we can go ahead and use our flow rate. Remember for the three pipes, we're going to have the Q is 333.3 CFS. And we'll connect that up to figure out what the head is from that. So if we use that 333-ish and just come straight across here through that turning line all the way over to the head, yeah, we get about three there. So I'm going to use just a head equal to three feet to simplify things. And I'll plug that into my equation for head water. So head water is equal to that head of three feet plus the allowable tail water, which was given to us in the problem statement, five feet for the tail water depth. So five feet. And then we have to subtract that uh, slope times length. But we've proven from looking at other problems that that's just going to be the same thing as the difference in the uh, heights here. So our inlet and outlet invert elevations are just one foot. So we're going to subtract one foot from that um, depth there. And so we get 3 plus 5 is 8 minus 1, 7 feet for the headwater for the outlet control for three pipes. So in that case, inlet control for three pipes is still greater. So inlet would govern um, for the three pipe scenario. Let's check it for four pipes as well. Since we're here doing it, we're going to make that first line be the exact same. Okay, so that first between the 72 and the 100. But then for our second line, we're going to have a Q equal to 250 CFS, and we're going to have to figure out what our H is going to be from that. So let's go ahead and draw that one on. I haven't drawn that one on yet. So we're going to have 250, so we're going to kind of go 
right in the middle of this here. 200, uh, 220, 240, 250. And we're going to go through that turning line. And it's practically a, a straight line there to come right through. My 250. And I called that 1.7. I mean, it's like right below that 1.6 mark. And we're heading up as we move down. So I called that an H of 1.7 for that. Uh, 1.7 feet. And so that does significantly lower this headwater. So we have 1.7 now plus the 5 feet. And then minus that 1 foot. And so we have 6.7 minus 1 we have 5.7 feet here. So that does change uh, the scenario with um, inlet versus outlet because um, we have a 5.7 feet here rather than 7 feet. But it's still less than the inlet because inlet control is 6.6 .6 versus 5.7. So either way you slice it, inlet control is what's going to uh, rule the day there. But I wanted to show that solution for both four three and four pipes.